right now parked up at the bottom of Glencoe um, just at the bottom of the pass where there's a bit of a lake and I'm just walking out onto a little bridge which runs over to this beautiful little cottage I'm gonna have so many photos of this area of this little white cottages in sort of different uh, different landscape settings but check out this one there's waterfalls up in the back at this beautiful valley and then there's some other opportunities for photos around here um, you've got some trees in the distance there which look back up the valley up the road now I've got this lake here might be able to do something with that so just gonna have a little wander about and see what photos we can take if I don't fall through this bridge first Notice that I've got my anti midge mask on because otherwise we'd get swarmed and I've been bitten thousands, literally thousands of times already. But um, we just come around the lake here opposite this house because you can shoot across the lake also. It's a bit greeny down there, it's not very nice, but I'll try to take a couple of shots from this angle. And also, you shoot back across the lake and sort of look up the Glencoe Valley. So I've taken a couple of long exposures up there, see how they turn out. Don't think I'm gonna head over to those trees just yet. We might try and find some other lone trees with a view up the valley a bit further up. But uh, yeah, so far, Glencoe is looking very good. So we are exploring the inner workings of the Glencoe Valley at the moment and it's just started raining and I'd like to take some, as Mads would call it, moody photos but there's a fine line between what's moody and then what's meh and right now it is proper meh, it's just starting to rain the clouds are above the mountains, not coming around them. It's really hazy against the backdrop. So uh, I think it's time for a beer. Okay, so <clears throat> first full day in Glencoe. And like I said, it's got meh. But just before we go for a beer, just stopping off at what is probably one of the most popular photo points in the area. And it's uh, photographing some waterfalls in front of this, which is Stob Derg. Stob, Stob Derg? Stob Derg. But uh, yeah, it's one of the biggest mountains in the area. And uh, The waterfalls seem to be over there. So I'm just going to go and scope out some compositions while there's literally no one else here, which is great. Um, just uh, maybe come back another day. I'm going to keep getting up at sunrise in the morning to see what it looks like, see if the conditions are any better to go and take some photos. But uh, yeah, this looks looks pretty good here. But um, essentially, what you get, I'm going to pop around here so you can see, is that. Uh, the waterfalls in front of the face of this mountain and you can see it's a lovely pyramid as you look at it from this side which is nice and symmetrical so it makes for a really nice composition so uh, let's go and uh, see what this looks like
So I think I've found what is probably the most popular composition. I think I can see a load of tripod uh, marks in the floor here. But for some reason in Scotland, it's been really sunny lately and there hasn't been any rain. And the rivers are running a little bit low. And as you can see, there is nothing coming here at all which usually there would be water falling all over these, which would make for a lovely photo. So I've come into the riverbed, but in coming into here to find a little waterfall, um, I've dropped quite far down, and there's this little ridge with a load of ferns on, which is obscuring most of the view that I have of Skir Dern or whatever it's called, Stob Dern, Stob the mountain. So, let me have a show you this. Uh, see, so I'm quite far down. I've got a nice shot through there, but then the mountain doesn't really look great in it. It isn't really the main feature of what I'm shooting, which means that the photo I've taken isn't quite balanced. So I'm gonna have to scope out another location, I think, or hope that it absolutely pisses down tonight and fills this river up. That's another option. So uh, moving up the riverbed a little, it opens out a bit and I can bring the mountain more into, uh, into the background make it look a little bit more imposing. So, meh, how's that look? I've got the stream running up the middle with a mountain in the background. Looks all right. Not quite as dramatic as it would be if I had all of those waterfalls back there. But it'll do for now and it's starting to rain. So hopefully that'll fill this river up a little, but maybe not quite as much as I would like it to. We'll have to see. sound yes so we're back at the top of the Ative Mall Pass and now we've got to the photo spot and because it's been raining for a couple of days it's now actually waterfall here just waiting for the clouds just maybe clear the top of the mountain a bit so we can get that in but yes, finally. I mean, this whole, this whole place here, no grass whatsoever, such a popular photograph spot. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to photographing this. It's gonna look like everyone else's, but very nice. So if you're gonna shoot from this ledge, I'd recommend an ND filter, obviously, smooth out those uh, waterfalls there. But also a wide angle lens. I'm on a full frame camera and I've got a 20 mil lens on and from the ledge here, I can just about capture the waterfalls leading into the shot with the tree on the left and then the mountain in the background. But uh, I had my 24 to 70 on couldn't quite fit it in or maybe just fit it in. So if you're gonna come down to this spot, bring a wide angle lens and you can either stand on this ledge or what I prefer actually, is just down below. Get your feet down there, get your feet wet, get your tripod wet, but shoot more up at these waterfalls and you cut out a bit of that middle guffness in between the waterfalls and the mountain. So uh, yeah, those are my Tony tips. Not my actual tip.
Good morning all. Finally, uh, a fine morning here in the Scottish Highlands. And uh, we've just had a short hike from the car park up to a place called um, Ralston Cairn. Uh, we've got a great view of the Three Sisters um, and down the valley up there. We were going to hike up a stop, but didn't quite have the um, energy to do it after this holiday now. We've been hiking for a week and a half and, well, me personally, seriously unfit. So, but hopefully a bit of this morning light will do. The, the clouds have literally just gone just been burnt off by the sun uh, from our campsite back up there this morning took some amazing shots of a cloud inversion that formed all the way down this valley so hopefully those videos and images come out well which meant we're a little bit late getting up here but a bit of soft morning light against the three sisters down the, the valley towards Glencoe should be quite nice so let me go and set up the camera some photos. Oh, and hopefully, because there's a little bit of wind, no f***ing midges. There were times when the Midgey invasion stopped me from vlogging, hence this voiceover. I also spent some time in this location at the evening when the sun was at the end of the valley rather than behind me. I'm going to show you a couple of images that I took which were difficult to take because you were shooting directly towards the sun but nonetheless I think they turned out okay. try to use some of the leading lines in the rocks leading up towards the A82 going down the valley up towards the sun and the mountains in the distance. The light was fantastic at this time of day. Again no vlog but I'm about to show you some photos from a famous lone house further up the valley. It's very easy to get to lots of parking and there will be lots of photographers there also. I visited twice, once on a moody day and the second time on a beautiful evening as the sun was going down. Here are the images that I took. The first two images are from the sunny day. This one I tried to use a bit of rule of thirds and have the valley on the right hand third and the lone house on the left hand third. The light is just beautiful at this time of day. The second sunny image, I went a bit across and tried to shoot through some of the reeds that were there. I had to use a slightly closed aperture in order to get everything in focus. But I think with the lone house poking through, this composition is very nice. The last two are from exactly the same location, but on a different day with much different conditions. You can see the clouds are hugging the top of the peaks here, which makes for a nice dramatic shot. The contrast of the white house against the green and the dark greys I think is excellent. 
There is a small river running in front of this lone house and a small bridge going over it. I stood on that bridge and took this particular shot. Using the river as a leading line up towards the house and the valley on the right hand side I think works as a basic composition. I didn't take any vlog while I was flying the drone around the area. However, there are so many amazing aerial photographs you can take around Bukhaya Latif Moor. Probably the most famous is using the river as a leading line up to the road bridge with the peak of Stobberg in the background. Very simple central composition works best here. From the same location, you can also take a lovely shot of the A82 heading towards the valley. Being such a straight road, it also makes for some simple but effective compositions. Let's take a look at a couple of shots I managed to capture. It's always worth getting up early here to catch a potential cloud inversion. I rushed outside of my pyjamas from our hobbit hut on the hillside to put the drone up. I managed to capture a great photo of this little white house, the valley filled with cloud and the sunrise which would eventually start pouring light into the top of the mountain pass. To say this area is beautiful is a massive understatement. It's definitely worth getting up early. Just even if you haven't had your morning coffee, go and do it. Or you can camp, wild camp on top of one of the peaks in the area and then just get out of your tent just before sunrise to catch something as epic as this. If you enjoyed this content, I'd really appreciate a like, a comment, let me know what you thought, or even a subscribe. Until next time, thank you.